Okay, we out here at the Dakota Pipeline protest here in D.C. Um, with the overwhelming support that you see today, how disappointed that you don't hear this issue among the candidates for president and Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump? It's pretty astounding to know that this is now an international worldwide issue and I have not heard yet either presidential candidate mention the Dakota Access Pipeline. Um, I, I suspect, I'm wondering if it's maybe the, the two of them's records, record on energy extraction and uh, specifically fracking because we know this is fracked, fracked product coming from the Bakken. Bakken. So, I'm hopeful that Hillary Clinton, at least, has a tribal platform. She said that she's for, for indigenous rights and the upholding of treaty rights. So I'm, I'm curious to hear her position on it. Has she even been out there? To Standing Rock Sioux Reservation? Yes. She has not. Or Donald Trump, that is correct. Donald Trump's policies towards Native American <laughs> people have been pretty uh, non-existent, to say the least. He's actually testified in Congress several times against Native people. You know, one of the things talked about on Facebook today was actually uh, the censorship of getting information out as far as what is going on out there on the front line um, with the security, with heavy machinery and weaponry that they're not allowing that type of access and also with the signaling of going out with the phone lines. Is that true? The phone line thing is actually not entirely accurate. They do only have a couple cell towers and the service is really, really bad out there, but that's actually more indicative of telecom generally in Indian country. We have a huge, huge, like, gray area and gap when it comes to telecoms. In Indian country, we don't have high-speed, you know, internet access. We don't have working cell phones. It's actually a pretty um, dead zone, unfortunately. Um, I think, you know, as, as far as the narrative goes and what we're seeing coming out of North Dakota, you go to the camp, you're physically there, I'm going back there tomorrow, you see people that are sharing music and culture and food and language and then going out and standing in peaceful protest against moving bulldozers. But then you go outside the reservation to the boundaries and you see a blockade with armed guards and this, you know, planes flying overhead and like this, this massive military presence and security presence that's, the two worlds can be more apart. How disappointed are people getting charged for trespassing out there? I mean, there, there's been lots so of people charged with criminal trespass, and there's been, and they're they're adding more and more charges on. I mean, it's it's obstruction, it's you know disorderly conduct, it's it's all these different charges, it's criminal mischief, um, and they're willing to charge anyone and everyone. Apparently, now they're charging Amy Goodman with exactly. democracy now for going out Monday. there and exercising her press right to like you know her First Amendment right to cover <laughs> something that was horrible happening that then became a viral video and sent that all over the world, and people saw how Native Americans were being treated in North Dakota. And that was the response. How trusting uh, are the Native people towards the government? Going back to 1989, when Russell Means spoke before the Senate, talking about what was going on with the Native American and how time after time they broke the treaties. How trusting uh, are the Native American people towards the government at this time, knowing that they have a history of breaking treaties? I think that the encampment speaks to that speaks to that question. Uh, regardless of the court process, regardless of these words from the White House, regardless of the Department of Justice, the Department of the Interior, the Department of the Army saying these things, Native American people are staying there. We're not going anywhere because we don't trust that. We don't trust a government that has broken almost every single treaty right we have. We don't trust a government that's actually breaking the treaty rights now. The Fort Laramie treaties protect that land. There are sacred sites in that place. NAGPRA, the Native American Graves Repatriation Act, is supposed to protect that area. It's not happening. We're seeing instead a the situation desecration of bur uh, sacred burial sites. Exactly, sites, correct? we saw a, a, the tribe, Standing Rock Sioux Reservation, actually like submit a supplemental brief detailing all of these sacred sites that are along the pipeline easement route. And the next day, Dakota Access went out and destroyed those sites. That's what we're seeing. Where was the response to that? We, we tried to file the tribe tried to file a, a temporary restraining order to stop that from happening. They were denied. So we're not trusting I was in the, any. Yeah, I was in the courts that day when, when that went down, and then exactly like you said, the very next day they were out there doing I think it. the Native American people know that after surviving genocide, after surviving broken treaties, and still subpar, less than less second-class citizen conditions, the most the strongest thing we can rely on is ourselves. And that is what this is, is, is a gathering of indigenous people from all over the nation and all over the world coming to stand with Standing Rock Sioux Tribe. I, I, I got to interject a question. Oh, hold on one second, sir. Uh, um, just going back to yesterday, you just had the birthday of Lynette Peltier. 
do you believe in your opinion that before Obama leave office, will he uh, get that pardon? I know that that's been a long time campaign and we haven't heard anything from Obama on haven't it. Haven't heard anything. So I'm, I'm curious to see what the legacy that President Obama leaves. I think that he has been up to this point with the strongest, he has been the strongest tribal president we've ever seen. He has started so many initiatives for Native American people and has put forward budgets that actually fund our agencies and fund our programs. Um, but unfortunately, Congress still has not followed through on its duty. But I'm, I really want to see what Obama leaves, and you know, we're we're now here asking what will him be directly. His legacy among what is your America? legacy? This is this is the, this is a reservation that you actually visited, and these people are asking for your help. Thank you for your time today. Thank you. All right.